<laughs> you shouldn't run with a hammer. Sprint! As an American, I think we just like things that go ping. Ding, 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 ding. Playing the triangle in middle school band recitals. Nothing wrong with it. Just being American. Don't believe me? Check out the M1 Grand ping compilation on YouTube. Do it. Now, besides just shooting trash or pumpkins after Halloween, steel targets can withstand thousands of rounds with very minimal upkeep. Over time, you will get pitting, but if you have a welder, or you know a guy with a welder, very easy to repair. All you do is, is add a little bit of filler material, fill in that little crater that's starting to form, and polish it off with the sanding wheel, you're good to go. Pretend like nothing happened. Now, steel targets are also great because if you're shooting at distance, say three, four, six hundred yards, and you're trying to tell where, where you're hitting, once you, once you fire off a round, wait a couple of seconds, you get that nice report if you hit the target. Did someone mention steel targets? I love steel targets. Got one right here. I'm gonna need a way to mount it though. Do you know a way? Now sure, you could mount your steel targets any which way, but today we'll be going over the two most common ways that people mount them. Now both these target stands are the most common because they're, they're one of the safest methods to mount your steel targets. Because what they do is they take the energy of the incoming round and they transfer it, transfer it back down into the ground in a safe direction. Because if you have a static rigid target that has no give to it, and you're shooting full-size rifle rounds such as 30-06, 308, 8mm Mauser, plethora of other hunting rounds, uh, a few things are, are going to occur. At the very least, you're going to have heavy pitting into your steel target. Um, if it's like 3 8 inch or, or thinner, you might just punch straight through the target. <laughs> Ask me how I know about that. Um, and the biggest concern is going to be safety. If, if that target has nowhere to go and it's, it's you know, faced up at 90 degrees, you're going to have a safety, a serious safety concern having ricochets coming back and going any which direction. Chains and whips excite me. Alright, so the first type of steel target stand we'll be talking about will be the chain type. Uh, chain type because of the chains, of course, that hold up the steel target. Uh, the main inner workings of this design um, Basically like two A-frames on either side, string or across. You have little loops right here just to hold the chain itself. Um, and the chain is mounted to the steel target via two carriage bolts, two nuts, and two washers here on the back side. Um, but yeah, that's the, the, uh, the bones of it. And when you mount the chain in the back, as I have here, um, it perfectly positions the target kind of five degrees or so backwards. And obviously when the round hits, uh, the round itself and spalling is going to be further pushed back. So all, all that crap is going to be going back and down in a safe direction, which makes this a good target. Um, but it does have some caveats, and uh, I'll be discussing that here soon. Now here's a close-up of the target stand itself. I use just number four rebar from Home Depot. Or if you work a blue-collar job and boss man says that the rebar is going in the trash anyway, uh, snag it for free. So there again is the A-frame. This is just kind of supporting it. Um, this is a little support for the chain. And same on the other side. Now as a pro tip, since your steel target is going to be swinging back and forth, I just took a sanding wheel with uh, off the angle grinder and just made a sharper tip there. Digs into the ground easier and it's a little bit, a little bit more stable. To complete your target, besides just the target stand, you of course need a target. You're going to need some chain. You're going to need a way to mount the chain to the frame of the target itself. I use uh, these little D-rings here. And then you'll also need a way to mount the chain to the target itself. And, and I use a 3 8 inch hardware. So a 3 8 inch carriage bolt, nut, and washer. Speaking of target, all my targets are 12 inch AR500 rated uh, half inch steel targets. Now the hardware to mount your steel target, um, the size is kind of determined 
by the size of the uh, the mounting holes right here. So if you go to Home Depot or Ace or you know wherever, I would recommend just taking the Target with you in your little shopping cart. Um, go to the hardware section and start playing with bolts and see what the largest bolt that will that will fit through your Target will be. And that's that's why I went three eighths inch. I found the largest to, for to secure the the Target itself. With your D-rings, make sure it's a large enough D-ring so it'll fit over the chain itself and also fit over whatever you're mounting it to on the frame. The chain I bought, I don't remember the exact size, but it was, it was one of the biggest chain that I could buy from Home Depot. And the number of links you'll need, um, try just kind of putting your target in the middle of the stand and, and just figuring out distance-wise about how much you'll need. And I, I figured over time that I need about 10 links or so, um, which comes out to be just over a foot. I think this is like 13 inch, inches of chain on either side to, to mount this. All right, now we'll attempt a, a quick build video. I've never done one of these on camera, so I hope this isn't like total dog crap. All right, D-ring going on first. Gonna get the other D ring on. This might be a tight fit, so I've got a little, uh, I've got a little enforcer. Nothing like a little persuasion. All right, got the chains on. Now it's time to mount the target itself. Now the order I go, I put the carriage bolt through, put the chain right behind the back of the target, put the washer on, and then put, put the nut on. Seems to work for me anyway. Now it's time to do the other side. Carriage bolt, chain, let's come around the table. Washer in back, and then secure everything down with the nut. I just hand tighten everything. It'll survive a range trip just fine. There you go. This is the first type of target stand that I built, and I built three of them. However, it's it's not the best system to, to mount your steel targets. And here I'll cover why. Uh, in my hand right here, you can see that on the film, this is after a few hundred rounds of, of shooting the steel target. It, it wreaks hell on your, on your hardware. Uh, washers and bolts you'll definitely be going through. I recommend carrying spares to the range with you. This is my little spare bag of hardware that I carry to the range just in case. I mean, your chain at some point will get shot off. Uh, you could take a direct hit to the carriage bolt, which will make it explode. So best to, to carry, I've got like three or four spare chain links all cut up, as well, as well as spare washers, nuts, and bolts, just in case. I think this design is inferior because no matter what the size of the chain, um, yeah, it's going to hold up a little bit better, the, the bigger the size of the chain, but if this takes a direct hit from a 30 out 6 or any kind of um, full-size rifle round, uh, it, it's going to shear. These will definitely be taking um, ricochets as well. And <laughs> here, uh, yeah, here's some chain that uh, either broke over time, took ricochets, and having a welder, it's actually nice because I can... That's one of the cost savings. I can actually repair the chain if I have some spare links. Kind of weld it back up. Here's my extremely average weld job. I mean, who cares? It's it's chain that I'm using for a target. It's gonna get it's gonna get shot up anyway. Oh yeah, look, look at that repair. Oh, that's a good one. But yeah, go into this target stand with with the notion that you know your chain, your carriage bolts, and your washers are all they're all consumable. Carry spares on you. 
Now the ranges I primarily shoot at are obviously outdoor ranges, but national forest ranges out here. And essentially there's, there's a firing line right here that no one crosses. And we all shoot one direction into, into a big berm. And once you set your targets, there might not be another break in the action for 10 or 15 minutes, unless you talk to everyone around you like, hey, do you want to go cold for a minute? Can we go cold set targets? And that, that being said, I have very few range trips where something doesn't go wrong. And usually, either the chain's gonna get shot off, the carriage bolt's gonna shear off. Well, what the heck, average man? Why don't you just be more accurate and avoid this problem altogether? Uh, I know, I know, tell me about it. Well, if there's a chance it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Or the target itself is gonna tip over. And it's super annoying once everyone's firing, it's like, oh crap, well I can't use that target until you know, the next stoppage. So that is one of the biggest pain, pain in the asses with this type of target system and why I'm moving away from it. Here's your 30 odd six round incoming. Another reason why I don't really like the chain system as much is it's the target itself doesn't really reset itself very well. Now it's okay if you're taking distant shots and you have adequate time between the shots. But if you're shooting your AR, your AK, whatever, and you're only like 100, 150 yards, um, and, you want, and you want a lot of follow-up shots, um, it's gonna be kind of swinging all over the place um, with rapid shots. So I, another reason why I'm not, I'm not crazy about this design. That was one, that was two. Don't know if you heard me, but I, uh, I did over a thousand. All right, so this is the preferred method, at least my preferred uh, mounting system for a steel target. Uh, I'm gonna call this one like a vertical target stand for lack of a better name for it, I guess. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and mount it. Yeah, a real complicated puzzle, huh? There you go, here is your, here's your target stand. And if I prefer this one and say this one is superior than, than the uh, chain system, why did I even bring the chain system up to begin with? Well, it is one of the most, well, maybe not most common, but it is one, one of the common methods that people use to, to mount their steel target. And I know someone's gonna bring it up, so I'll go ahead and address it. So instead of using the chains, you can just use rubber straps, which will withstand more, more uh, bullet hits. Um, so you'll, you'll get more longevity. Plus, rubber straps aren't as cheap as you think they are. Um, and, all the other problems still persist with, with that type of system. Uh, especially if you're on uneven ground, you're still gonna have the, the risk of it falling square on its face when it gets imbalanced. And it's still gonna be moving around on you and not resetting very very well. This one we will reset very well, and we'll get to that in a minute. But um, yeah, as I sit here crisscross applesauce, hands and lap, um, Let's go ahead and deconstruct this just so we can construct it again and I can show you the inner workings of it. So when you go to build this system, it's essentially two pieces. You have number one, your, your stable base that has in a built-in 2x4 holder right in the middle. And then you have your target stand itself, which is two 2x4s that are screwed together. And your steel target is mounted uh, basically to the 2x4 with, uh, with some hardware. All right, so I've disassembled the target and I'm gonna go through just a quick assembly. Um, it's not gonna be a, like a full-on build video. I'm actually gonna be doing a build here as my next video, so stay tuned for that. If you want kind of a full depth build analysis, if you want sizes, the exact components used and, and all that, it's gonna be a full-on build video. Um, I was debating putting in this video, but I didn't want this running too long. And you know, some of you might already have the gist of, of how to build it, so I'll, I'll leave you to it. But, but for those who want like a very detailed, very outlined um, video on how to build it, and also I'll spend more time on welding, how, like how to weld up, or how I welded up this base, while I'll also showcase, because um, I, I know a lot of people don't have a welder, so I'll, I'll show an alternative, probably how to like do it just using two by fours and some scrap wood or, or whatever. So. Um, yeah, and uh, which is great because I already mentioned that I'm going to be replacing all my uh, uh, 
all my chain targets. I'm going to be um, building two more of these uh, vertical scan types. So um, be a perfect video for that. So yeah, without further ado, uh, here's all the components. Um, let's see, just for starters, um, this, this two by four on your stand is going to determine like the height of your target. Um, it, if you're curious, I think this one's like two foot, two foot nine. Um, and this, this is the two by four that's actually going to hold your target. That's a uh, 13 inches. And obviously both of these are just screwed together with a few screws. So, all right, let's go, let's get to, uh, assembling the target. This will take your, uh, Look, this is a half inch car carriage bolt. I, I bumped it up to half an inch. So, take your target, put that through. Next is you're gonna put your spring over the carriage bolt. And I gotta think here for a second. Yeah, okay, and then washer, half inch washer goes next. I'll go over there. I guess uh, do the same to the other one. Rinse and repeat. Stay. All right. Now we'll just slide it through. Should mention that I uh, drilled a hole through a half inch hole through this two by four to mount to mount the target. Should wiggle through. There we go. Now it's kind of mounted to your target. Like so. Next, take two more uh, half inch washers, put them on the back side here. And then just take your half inch nuts and tighten it down. Tighten. Um, I like to take a wrench and just you know tighten it down a, a decent amount anyway. It doesn't have to be super tight. I like to tighten it down to a point where uh, where the springs right here start to compress a little bit. Try to make uh, both both sides tighten them down as as even as you can. There you go. All right. Now once you've got your target assembled, nothing left to do but actually mount it into the target stand. Look, I know I haven't mentioned it throughout this video just yet, but anytime you're handling your targets, um, especially if it's steel related, um, it's gonna, your targets are gonna catch all kinds of bullet fragments, burrs, sharp edges. So always make sure you're, you're wearing um, thicker gloves or these are leather gloves. I, I handle my targets with these all the time. Um, I know I've been naughty throughout the video and I haven't been wearing them all the time. Just just keep it out of the down mode. Don't tell my mom, okay? Now this target itself has survived three rain sessions. Yeah, I believe three. Um, and I've shot several hundred rounds each rain session. Um, I mean, it's been distributed between a couple targets, but this target itself has withstood at least 300 rounds. And I just wanted to show you how resilient it is to, to taking damage. Um, <laughs> Of course, uh, uh, the stand itself has taken uh, plenty of bullet holes because, look, I'm an average shooter and we're going to miss, right? Um, but, but the beauty of this system, too, um, sure, there is the possibility that a carriage bolt is going to take a direct hit, but it's not as likely as shooting a chain off. And the having the target right here is actually going to protect like the spring and the rest of the hardware. 
as well as the screws that's holding these two two by fours together. So, so really the only um, the only consumable things that you're looking for on on this type of target is just just replacing your two by four after 500 rounds or so, and maybe a carriage bolt. But it's going to be a lot cheaper having spare cut up two by fours and a few carriage bolts rather than uh, the the chain system alternative where you're looking at chain, carriage bolts, washers, I guess you're nuts over time too. So this is cheaper. Um, it's also a lot more sturdy. It's not gonna be moving around like your, like your chain system. Plus, it resets very nice. But it resets very nice, especially with having those springs right there. So you can't really see it from the, from, uh, from the camera right there, but this target is angled about five degrees back. Plus you have the additional, once your bullet does strike, it's gonna move back, you know, 10 to 15 degrees or so. And it reset itself just like that. Just like that. So follow-up shots are gonna be great. Um, I've angled this up on the slope where I shoot. Probably a good 15 degree slope or so this thing's been angled down. And it, it has not fallen over. So this is from now on my preferred my preferred target stand, and for all the reasons we discuss, um, if you're between the two, look, I'm not against the chain system. I'm just saying for me, it uh, it's not as reliable as this or as cheap. So yeah, stay tuned for that build video where I'll be making two more of these, or I guess in that video I'll just be making one more of these, and I'll I'll outline everything um, for you guys. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, shooting still is fun, man. I want to encourage all you guys to shoot it and, and have an affordable stand that you can make. Like, don't go buy target stands. They're, they're so overpriced for what they are. You can build a target stand. I know you can. I know you can. Um, and you can do it cheap. It's fun. You know how to repair it. Uh, you can make spares. Um, you know, In this case, you just need some like spare 2x4s and, and some carriage bolts. But... And I know there's all kinds of variations with, with these targets, um, but primarily, you know, with the two main types being like the chain system and being the vertical target system, um, this is one of my favorite for mounting a uh, target on a vertical stance. I know there's also the, the hanger style. Um, I don't have them here. I'll, I'll you know, throw in some footage here. Uh, there's that system as well. Um, but bottom line, I kind of like having two contact points. Now here's a pistol target that I have that kind of gives you the option of you could mount just one here in the middle, but still it, it could kind of move around because it's only one contact point. So um, I like having at least two as I have here because like I mentioned earlier, it resets really nice and you have that more st stability for, for more follow-up shots. So Well, I hope you guys found that video encouraging, insightful. Uh, I really just want to encourage you guys to shoot steel and... As the old uh, as the old saying goes, you have your shooting career before you shot steel, and then and then after you shot steel. So it really is that much fun. And don't go out buying those pre-made target stand kits for what they give you, the material that's that's in them. Man, they they really gouge you price wise. Plus, making these stands yourself, you not only have the pride that you made it yourself, but you can custom make these and tailor them to your own shooting needs. So strongly encourage you guys, and I hope I've done my part in encouraging you guys to get out there and pick up some tools and, and get at it. Shout out to Clayco47 for commenting on my AR47 video. You guys don't know who he is. He is a phenomenal resource when it comes to anything and everything AK-47, AKM pattern rifle. Um, phenomenal shooter, manual of arms, um, just, just a great resource if you're, if you're in AKs and, and that sort of thing. Um, man, just, uh, just that one comment alone, you know, being a, uh, a small channel, just starting out new to this whole YouTube thing and editing, you know, I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, <laughs> but you know, just, just that little bit of encouragement means, means so much to, to me and in, in a small channel like myself. So, Hey, thanks man. And, uh, yeah, keep up the great work yourself. You make some phenomenal videos. So. Hey, I'm just an extremely average man, and uh, I've got to go, I got to, I got to go poop. Speaking of target, it resets.
shooting steel and i guess the preface for for this video uh easiest to start i guess with an origin story uh, i began shooting steel i mean maybe here and there growing up at like my uncle's house or something but and I really got into it was probably my late 20s. Where we shoot here out west, um, mostly shooting national forest where it's a situation, you know, it's just a bring your own, pack it in, pack it out sort of situation. So bring whatever targets you want to shoot, just clean up after yourself. And I was fairly new into firearms, maybe only like three years in. And I remember the rifle, the, the guns I brought to the range that day, I had my 8mm Mauser, um, such a sweet gun, love shooting that thing. Uh, I think I had my GP100, my 357, and I believe I had my SKS that, by, by that point. And, yeah, he shows up with a steel plate, and remember, we're all kind of new sh to shooting steel, and the way it was mounted, it was like a, a 2x4, and I think it was just like a, like a pointed end, like, you know, you took a saw and just cut it at a 45 degree angle on one end, and had a pointy end to, to put into the dirt. Um, but I remember it being bolted to the 2x4. And there, uh, it was pretty much a static target. I mean, there was a little bit of movement between the, the two bolts, but it didn't, it didn't allow it to move very much. It's pretty much a static target. And I remember, him, you know, all right, well, let's shoot the Mauser at it. Boom, punches straight through. <laughs> Take another shot. Boom, punches straight through. Oh, boy. <laughs> And, you know, Julio was like, ah, it's okay. It's kind of a beat-up second-hand target anyway. And to this day, I, I do owe Julio. I owe you a steel target, bud. I know you're uh, kind of across the country now, but uh, but that was fun. That was kind of my, I guess, intro or my inspiration to shooting steel. And my God, is it fun. I mean, anyone will tell you. It's that uh, that addictive nature or that um, there's something just so satisfying about getting that report back. So that was my intro, and, you know, soon after that, of course, I, <laughs> I'm going online, doing my research about, you know, I have full-size rifles, what size, you know, go go, go the half-inch steel route, make sure it's at least AR-500 rated. You know, you just you Google enough, ask enough questions, you, you, you find out what to get, what to buy. And being the little tinkerer that I am, I'm like, oh, well, shit, all I have to do is make a couple of stands. Looks like there's you know, two solid ways to make stands, you know, hence, uh, hence the video that I, I currently, they, that you guys have currently watched, um, and, uh, yeah, initially I went to the, and this is, soon after that, I, I got into welding, it, it's something I always, I always wanted to do, I always, I, I think it's such a cool, cool trait to have, such a cool, uh, trick to have up your sleeve, and, and know how to do, is, is know how to weld, and I knew it was, it was a lifelong skill, you know, just, the nature of what I like to do and my hobbies. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I need to know how to fuse steel together. So when it came to building the stands, uh, kind of an obvious choice. I need, I needed an excuse to, to play with my welder. And I found that just buying rebar and welding it up, I think I watched, was an Honest Outlaw video of his cheap target stand builds. And I noticed he was just taking... Um, you know, eight foot or six foot sections of rebar and just bending it and making like cheapy targets. And that was my inspiration. But having a welder, I already, you know, kind of had, kind of had a trick up my sleeve. So I'm like, all right, well, the main, the main build, I guess, is, is kind of making these like A-frame target stands and, you know, putting chain on either side and, and hence the one I showed you in the video. And and of course, one steel plate's not enough to shoot at. You got to buy another, and maybe a third, because why not? Put one at a hundred yards. Work on distance. At you know, my range really only allows like 150 to 200 yard max, I would say. So yeah, throw one up the hill as far as you can, and uh, who knows? Maybe have two at 100. You can kind of work on target transition. And uh, you know, after after a year or two of shooting the chain and continually buying chain and carriage bolts. Um, yeah, you realize it's, it's not the greatest system in the world. It works, sure, but uh, the ranges I shoot at uh, are all national forest, and so it's all, there's kind of like a, a berm or a firing line that no one crosses. You know, we're all, we're all in the greens to shoot this direction, and it's already annoying 
if somebody, you know, you're, you're shooting, but someone else shows up and it's like, you got to wait for them 10, 15 minutes to get all set up and set their targets and blah, blah, blah. So I don't want to be that guy that has to flag everyone down because my targets are falling over. My carriage bolt broke and now I can't use that. Uh, now I can't use that target, you know, use, use the other two or, or something. But, you know, I've had times where I've shot all three <laughs> and now I've got nothing to shoot until there's a break in the action. So, you know, just, just after living the life with these, with these chain targets and, and all the ups and downs, I, I realized, man, this isn't really the most reliable system. Um, so I started uh, going down the YouTube rabbit hole and I, I found just making these, but, but to, to give the, because it is more of a static vertical target, obviously the target needs, needs some give somewhere. And that's when I found out about, um, putting springs through the carriage bolts and, and kind of angling the carriage bolts back initially. So you have that five degrees already kind of slanted backwards, but the, then the springs, once the bullet hits, gives it the additional uh, movement and for, for the bullet and spalling to, to go in a safe direction. So after three range trips with, with no hiccups, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is the way to go. This is the way to go. So currently making this video, I've made one and I'm going to replace my other target sands. I'm, I'm going to go with this vertical system. So, and it's, a, it's a perfect excuse to, to film myself making one for, for you guys to, um, you know, I, I would just avoid the chain route if, if you can help it, unless you have a crap load of chain laying around or something, then sure. Maybe that's a cheaper route for you. But, um, yeah, the, the vertical steel target hanger is, is the way to go. I think. So, but that was the inspiration behind this because man, shoot steel if you can, if you can, it's, it's, it's just so much fun. There's a reason why everyone swears by it. So yeah, that was the, their inspiration behind this is just my love of shooting targets that are, they're fun to shoot. And I mean, this is easy. Anyone can build this at home. And, uh, like the motto of my channel, like if you're a handy guy, if you got a couple tools, man, you can build these. Don't buy target stands. They are so overpriced for what they are. And then you're just relying on them for parts. Because, yeah, some of those target stands, man, they are so overbuilt, expensive. I mean, you know, I, I haven't, I'll probably do a price list eventually, but making these these rebar chain hangers, I, I guess with the chain, the hardware, and just the material and rebar, and I guess a can of spray paint because I did paint them. I mean, we're talking... 20 to 30 dollars in in um yeah if you price out all the material whereas man i've i remember going to the tanner the the gun show by me and looking at their target stands and man they went like over 100 bucks for their little fancy little systems that looks like it's a pain in the ass to set up and that's another thing since it i do shoot in a pack in pack out kind of area is i have to carry these things um i might have another video of building a wagon <laughs> so I can cart these things out a lot, a lot quicker. But the, the point being, I have to physically carry everything out there that I want to shoot. So the, the slimmer, the, the lighter weight, the better. And that's why rebar is nice because for its, uh, for its, for how light it is, it's, it's relatively sturdy and, and can take, can take a beating too. So, yeah, all said and done, I mean, this is this is the inspiration to make this video, is to show you guys how to how to make them. Because again, do not buy these target stands; it's so ridiculous, ridiculously expensive, and it's so cheap. Like once you do build it, uh, really, the only wear item is the two by four that's going to get shot up. And sure, your carriage bolts carriage bolts over time are probably going to get beat up, but but they're not taking the same punishment as the chain.